Today, guys, we are talking about the SR characters in Solo Leveling Arise currently, and we're going to rank them. I hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to subscribe if you are new. Also, post down below your top three, in your opinion, the top three SR characters in the game. Let's get started with Nam Chae Young here. She's actually incredibly strong. For the record, I'm not going to consider the individual weapons for these characters because we don't have them now. Uh, I don't know how else we're going to get them other than crafting. Uh, well, I guess there's a little bit of a, a teaser for that with Choi, but nonetheless, you know, we're not going to cover those. So the most important thing for this character is that first and foremost, she's breaking on almost all of her skills, which is incredible. If you didn't know, break is where you break the gauge on the opponent. Not all bosses can be broken, but when you can, for example, Egress, you want to do it as much as you can possibly because when they're broken, they just take so much more damage. And aside from the fact she's breaking all over the place, uh, she also has freeze on a lot of her skills. Her basic here, you see freeze is there. That's nice. Her support skill will freeze the opponent. That's when she's supporting Janu. Look at that. Uh, we also do have her QTE, same type of deal. She's going to slide in, and she's going to do the same thing. And then on her ultimate, we also have Freeze here as well. Freeze is, as you see, super strong. It's only for a few seconds, but those seconds are, are, are just incredible for you. And she also has a passive to where if the opponent has Freeze, she will do extra damage to frozen targets. So that's another thing, too. I'm not really going to cover her limit breaks, but she's got some really strong effects in here too. Like increasing HP is just going to increase her overall damage. The break effectiveness goes up. Just like so many things are in here where she's really, really strong. Increases the explosion range, the duration of freeze. Like she's really strong in my opinion. So I'm going to rank her pretty highly on our tier list to get started. So let's go ahead and pull that up right here. She's going to shoot all the way to the top. So we're going to cover this repeatedly throughout the video i'm going to come back to this and we're going to rearrange it when we get towards the end so let's go ahead and move on from here we're going to cover the next one which is going to be anna anna is an interesting one she's kind of a similar playstyle character a ranged water type character with breaks but anna is a little bit more of a crowd control character she also does some like negative status effects with poison zone as you see here she will do that that's pretty solid too her stuff as most characters is kind of the case her stuff scales off of her attack stat uh, she probably has a little bit higher of a threshold for damage. I'm not really sure about that. But regardless, I'm not really worried too much about these characters, you know, in some situations being a damage dealer. But I will say water is kind of a weird spot to be in right now because they only have one SSR currently. They're going to get another one or two. No, Cha is, is light, but Alicia's water, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I don't know what bake is, but nonetheless, they're going to get at least one more soon. So it'll obviously even out. But right now, the only one right now is Sio, and she's actually really, really good. So anyway, water does have value for a lot of the bosses in the game. All the elements are good for, for bosses and stuff. It just depends what you're taking on, right? But a water breaker, another one here. Uh, ranged fighter as well. Crowd control, doing AoE hits as you see here. Look at the, all the different arrows that are falling here. So that's solid too. She doesn't have like freeze or some of those other things that uh, we do see. Like just right here, it's kind of the same type of deal. Just a bunch of arrows falling down, breaking the opponents. That's good though, just for crowd control like I mentioned. Here we see break. Water element and airborne alongside the poisonous zone again on the QTE. Very strong QTE. Not the strongest support skill, but nonetheless, it's a medium break, so I'll take that. I'm not mad at that. <clears throat> and then the ultimate's bugged. I can't really tell you what it does. It just says it does a large poisonous zone. Oh my god, look at that. Look at the map. <laughs> look at all of that. But it's totally bugged. I can't tell you anything else about it. But nonetheless, I think she's really good. But I actually think that Nam is the better character to have. But I don't think it's like a huge gap. I just value the uh, the, the the freeze incredibly high. Um, other than that, though, I mean, they're doing the same break amounts, things like that. But I value that freeze a lot. So we're going to go ahead and rank her now in today's video. Uh, we're going to drop her in A for now. We will, again, at the end of the video, probably rearrange it. Let's look at Park here because he was just kind of at the top of the list. And so for Park... Here's how things look. First and foremost, I've just got to say the double axe thing is amazing. Like, <laughs> this is really cool. So I haven't really covered it, but some of the characters as like a preference thing for player, for people, you know, other players, uh, maybe you'll like more characters than I do because maybe they swing slow. Maybe they swing fast. Maybe they have a lot of movement. Like Nam actually also, I really like her because her movement's really cool. Um, that is a factor, but that's more of like a, a personal preference thing, right? So unfortunately, there's not really too much to write home about except for this ultimate. <laughs> that is that is one hilarious ultimate. Like it's just, wow, they really brought in the statues. 
Um, anyway, anyway. So, you're, the only reason you're really going to be using him is so you can have a water damage dealer. Or water, excuse me, wind damage dealer. He does do good damage. It scales off of his defense. You would want defense increasing artifacts, things like that. Uh, maybe even weapons, obviously. You want to have a defense set on him. He does have high modifiers scaling off of his defensive number. So, that's pretty much the only real reason. He's not really doing much else. He does an airborne. He has this, like, looks like a charges up. I don't really see anything fancy here. Another airborne effect here. Probably just, again, going to hit pretty hard. He also does have a knockdown on one of his skills. He has airborne's knockdowns. And then for his passive, his passive is pretty strong. This is where he's strong at because his skills are not it. So when spinning strike, downward strike, or charge attack are used, so like everything here, like is, is all of this stuff. So when all of that, any of that stuff is used, right? Uh, applies the father of two effect. If the user's HP is 30% or less, applies father's determination. So if he's low on HP, he gets the second one. So for the first one, increases the user's defense by 4%, stacks up to 10 times. So he can get up to 40% here by the base. I'm sure it probably goes up with some limber breaks or something. Like increasing the user's defense, blah, blah, blah. Um, so when he uses those skills, his defense goes up, which is amazing because, again, he's got high modifiers for the numbers that's multiplying in there. But also his defense keeps rising and they scale off of the defense. Uh, so Father's Determination, this is when he's low on HP. Spinning strike can be used infinitely. Apply super armor as well. Increases the user's attack speed. That is actually really strong. Increases the user's defense as well for four seconds. Activates only one time. So the spinning strike is going to be... Uh, it's, where is it? Yeah, oh, this is the spinning downward, though. It's this one right here. Hey, where is it? Charge attack, downward, axe. There it is, okay. So he just repeatedly uses the core attack over and over. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty strong. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. So if you're looking for a wind damage dealer, uh, he's he's going to be pretty strong. His attack speed going up too is really strong considering he gets super armor and can spam this when he's low on HP. He also gets more defense. Like he, I think that the passive is where it's at. So like if you're just looking at characters on a surface level, you know, it's really easy to kind of overlook this guy or, or, or down shoot him, shoot him down because he's not like great on paper, but... And I'm going to put him here as well. Uh, but I think that what's happening here is that, like, if you look at the passives and the way that they're scaling for some of these characters for him, that's really strong. So I'm not really, again, going to consider the limit breaks because we're not there yet where people are going to have these like, fully limit broken characters for the most part. You're in the top 0.01% if you've got these guys all limit broken. I have Juhi done, but they gave me, like, two copies or something for free, right? So next up is we're going to look at Kim. So Kim is our next character on the list. And with him, we have the one and only Mr. Taste. No, no, what is it? Eat my steel, whatever he says. He does this attack. So this guy's kind of interesting, actually. He's pretty bad. <laughs> he's pretty bad, but, but, but he's another wind type character uh, that scales off their defense. He is also going to have some of the same utilities as who Park, I believe his name was, where he's doing knockups, you know, airborne's, knockdowns, blah, blah, blah. So that same type of stuff. So two things are interesting about this guy. First and foremost, his support skill, like if you take him with Janu, has a heavy break on it. That's uncommon from all the breaks I've seen. That is uncommon. So that's that's really strong. Who cares about the damage or anything like that? A heavy break is going to be very useful. Next up is his ultimate is actually kind of good too. So here's how it looks first and foremost. It keeps hitting the target repeatedly. So power gauge consumption 100%, deals wind damage, increases damage by 50% when attacking a target whose break gauge is destroyed. So after you've broken the opponent, it does more damage, which again, breaks already do more damage. So his passives are just basically a way to loop his skills. Using his skills, the various skills just reduces the cooldown and then increases your core gauge so you can use the core attack more. So he's an interesting character. I don't think that he's bad. I just don't think he's great either. I think if I have to place him somewhere, I think the last character is better because I think the main redeeming quality for this guy is going to be the break. But I also do think that just in general, I don't think he's all that great. I think what saves Park is the path like his park skills aren't as good in my opinion but the passive for this guy is just really really strong so let's move on to the next one on the list and that will be han here sung yi so uh sung yi for her she's another water character except she's more of a damage dealing character um i really like her movement as well the way she plays i think she's really fun to use 
So she's kind of weird though, other than what I was saying. Like I said, I like the way that she plays, but she throws these um these swords or what are they? Just like little ninjas. I don't want to say like ninja stars, whatever they're called, damn it. They call them umbral weapons, but you get you see it, right? So the way she plays is she throws these around. And basically, uh what is the mechanic called? It's called umbral weapons. They just she just places them on the ground. They basically just stay on the ground. So eventually she picks them up and she gets more damage for it. It's kind of weird. You see they're staying around there. Eventually she picks them up and gets more damage for it. Also, her skills do poison, so that's good too. Poison's description is deals equal to 150% of the user's attack every three seconds and decreases their recovery rate by 70%. That's actually really strong against bosses that like to heal, like that damn spider boss. <laughs> it's like, screw that guy, right? Um, anyway, she's doing that on her QT and the support skill. And then, so here's how things look for her ultimate. So the user places five weapons on the ground when the last attack hits, it does a knockdown. She has an airborne in there as well. So she has all these skills throwing these uh, around and then just leaving them. And then her passive is interesting. So let's read the passive, then we'll read the retrieve skill. The damage of retrieved umbral weapons increases by 30% when Songyi uses the retrieve skill on poisoned targets. So the play style for her is to use her basic, uh, obviously, but you want to use her core attack so you can place one umbrella on the ground, or umbral weapon on the ground, excuse me. Her swift flight skill one places two. Her ultimates and uh, QTEs also are placing more and then doing poisons. You want the poison out there, obviously. Her ultimate is doing more damage, and then ultimately after that, you use retrieve here. So she is going to do... Uh, the user places six on the ground, then retrieves the umbral weapon. So she places another six here. So she's putting more than 10 throughout all of her skills. So ultimately when you pick them up, you are gonna do, what's it, 30% more? Yeah, increases by 30%. Uh, <laughs> so that's really, really strong. So you wanna do that. So ultimately she's doing a lot of damage, uh, but I, I think she's probably more trouble than she's worth. I think that out of the characters we looked at so far in this video, she probably peaks the highest, right? In terms of offensive firepower. And it makes sense because most of them have been like range characters. Or we had a defense character looks like as well. So it makes sense. But I think she's probably a little too finicky. But other than that, I really do like her. So I'm placing her in B for now. All right, let's move on to the next one. She's kind of a weird one, by the way, uh, uh, Song Yi, because the way she reads on paper, like I have to like, she's the first one I have to actually show you in gameplay. It's hard to describe how she functions. All right, so Dong Suk is next, and he's a dark element character. Another attribute that has a couple of SSR characters, but you know, dark is one of those ones that like you you don't need as much, but you're gonna need all these elements in certain spots, right? So let's start off with a passive. If the user's HP is 75% or higher, increases skill damage by 16%. If the user's HP is below 50%, applies Lizard's Vitality which is recovers 2.5% of HP every one second. So he wants to maintain a high HP threshold. And then if he drops below half of his life, he'll start recovering HP. So for him, I didn't really talk about sets for most of these characters, but for him, you want to use sets that can help him maintain his, his, his defense ability, right? Uh, either, you know, into, in, there's a one set that, uh, that, increases your overall hp that would be a good one for him i don't really love the four on that one though because it chops your attack you don't really want that but the two would be fine there are other sets that you could use on him as well but i think with him you really want to also pair him with a healer or something like that something to help him maintain that higher threshold so here's a look at the ultimate after unlocking his power with the shout dong suk le leaps into the air with all of his strength lands on the enemy's head and strikes them down so let's go ahead and pull up the preview you guys can see how it functions and boom all right so for this one it scales off of the max hp also dark damage when the first attack of the combo hits it stuns the target first attack instead of the last attack is pretty solid but i mean it's all one hit anyway typically so it doesn't really matter but there you see stun again the after effect of that just again similar to freeze has a lot of utility uh okay that's Okay, yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen that notice, but okay. Um, anyway, so he swings with the sword and shield for his combat. So right here, scaling off of his uh, HP still through all of his skills. He also does the break, so that's nice. Against dark bosses, the, are you going to just take this notice off, or is it just going to stay there all video? Against dark bosses, that's going to be really, really strong, though, particularly if they obviously can be broken. And then right here, there's a spelling error with enhance. 
But <laughs> when the skill is used, it applies the enhance effect for a certain period of time. This one's pretty cool. Increases the user's max HP by 30%. So that is really good for 10 seconds. It decreases the cooldown of Scorching Shield, which is going to be this skill here. So the, uh, the second skill's cooldown going down. And it also has a heavy break on it. So he is just a boss-breaking monster. Who cares much about his damage? But his damage should be good, too, because he gets that enhance effect, uh, which will help him maintain. Actually, I need to go test this out. I don't know that that increases his max HP, but he if he wasn't at he was if he's not able to heal up to that number, then that just means that his threshold is bigger, right? It's easier for him to get below 50, which you don't really want. But anyway, increasing your max HP is good. Nonetheless, it just screams if I'm if I'm reading it and understanding it properly, that screams that you want a healer with him. All right, so on the QTE skill, he does a stun and a medium break. So I'll just like his brother with the stun. <laughs> so when the first hits, uh, he does a stun, and then he also does enhance. So that's that's actually a really strong support skill. He's actually a really good support character. I think I think he's really good as a support character for Janu. I like that a lot. His QTE is another break attack. Just kind of just doesn't really do much else, but that's kind of it. I like him a lot, actually, as a character, and I really, really like him as a... God dang it, get the notice off my screen. Oh my god, it's driving me crazy. I guess it's going to stay all video. Yeah, I really like him as a support character for Janu specifically. Um, so I actually have him built him. I'm going to be building him now. A little bit, a little bit. So we are going to place him... I don't want to put him in OP because I don't think he's OP, but I think he's really good. All right, so next up on our list is going to be... This guy, Joe Kuan. I don't remember this. I do remember this guy. I just don't remember his name. Oh, well, I now I do, right? But I didn't remember. Let's check out his passive first. Increases the user's attack when hit by a burned target. So that's kind of interesting. So focusing on the burn mechanic there. First and foremost, uh, this could work pretty well with other burning characters. So this is where you can have fun, some fun like utility. It's unfortunate so much of the game is predicated on like monocolor teams. To where you want to have all light characters all night characters you get the point like all dark fire blah blah um cross hybridization could be kind of interesting anyway light damage here with the support skill uh and it burns the target so burning is deal it's the same it looks like it's the same description actually as, a, as an effect as poison 150 of the users attack every three seconds is for 30 seconds is pretty good seems like it's the same description uh just basically just chip damage right so we look at the QTE, um, burns as well. Uh, when it hits, it burns, deals light and element damage as well. So that's kind of it. These ones, are they're just kind of just basic attacks here. But you, if you want the burn, that's good. Uh, there are other characters, if I recall correctly, that synergize off of burn effects being on the opponents. So that works out pretty well. Light element damage there. And then again, wouldn't you look at it? Wouldn't you know it? Deals additional damage to burn targets. The basic attack uh, is just light damage. And the core attack is also just light damage. He's not great. Um, his whole thing is when the opponent is burned, he does more damage, but without a heavy investment, I'm just not really feeling it. So I'm just putting him at C. I think he actually needs a lot of investment. Like you've got to, you've got to get the dupes in him. You got to get the, oh, look at that. He does a stun in here. That's great. You got to get the dupes on a lot of characters, but I think he is the first character that I've looked at so far that really, really, really wants dupes. Um, so we're going to cover that, you know, as it goes to other characters, but for now, I don't really love him. But I think, it, also, he's very cookie-cutter, very straightforward, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not a great thing either. Next up is Kang! All right, so this guy's another Dark Element character. When Dagger Toss, Tracking, or Assaults hit, they inflict Bleed, and Bleed is... Okay, the, the notice is gone. The user deals damage equal to 0. 0.6 of their current HP every three seconds. That actually could be kind of good. <laughs> that actually could be kind of good. Uh, I... I need to test this out, but like if you've got a really stacked Kang, I think that could be kind of good personally. Let's read the rest of it. Okay, so the ultimate here. After cloaking himself in darkness, he hacks at the enemy with superhuman speed. Dark element damage. Just basically, there's nothing else here except just heavy damage modifier. His modifier is pretty let's crazy. Try. So let's look at it here. 2355. What was the modifier for our last couple of characters? I don't feel like it was that high, was it? It feels like 23 is... Yeah, I see 17. 23 is very high. I figured it was. How's Song Yi doing? She was another attacking character too. 25. So, so yeah, see, I knew she had a super high damage threat. Um, Last one we're going to check here. 19. So, anyway. Uh, Kang is at 23-ish. So, that's, that's pretty good. But, I mean, he doesn't do anything else. So, there's that. 
So let's see the rest of this here. So the QTE jumps out of the air, slashes down, and throws a dagger as he steps it uh, back. So just, again, just deals damage. Nothing else happening here. So he's doing a bleed here, deals dark damage, and then when the first attack in the combo hits, inflicts bleed on the target. So for the passive, once again, just when dagger toss, tracking, or assault hits, they inflict bleed. So that's just all this other stuff, right? Yeah. So basic skill one, tracking, and then assault is going to be ultimate. Where is also assault at? Oh, QTE. Okay. So he, so the, <laughs> let me just, let me just say this. Why don't they just say do bleed if that's the case? This is a waste of a passive. It's actually a waste of a passive. You could just put this effect bleed on these skills. It's absolutely a waste of a passive. What is the point? Unless, unless it calculates separately, like it multiplies or something weird like that. Then okay, but like if it's the same as this, if it's all the same to you, I don't understand it. So anyway, it's just a heavy damage and bleed. That's it. Very underwhelming. I think he's the worst character we've looked at so far. Uh, I don't. I don't like F saying useless. I don't think he's useless, but I don't love him either. Like he is easily the worst character here. I've purposely avoided my main guy. I love. I love my main guy. We're gonna get to him last, so he's gonna be the last one. Juhi, I just got to say, I do not like Juhi's playstyle whatsoever. Like, also, since there's an abundance of water SRs, I, I think she's easily the worst one. However, I will throw her a bit of a bone being a healer in a game where there's clearly not a lot of healers. So I will give her a little bit of a bone. Increases the user and team members HP. That's a good passive. That is a good passive. Increasing the overall team's HP is awesome. I love that, right? Uh, Juhi and her team members recover 400 more. The national MP recovery rate goes up. Okay. I actually have fully duped Juhi for some reason. I think, like I said, I think they gave like three copies of her or something. So increases HP. Uh, her recovery rate goes up. Healing circle activates when Juhi tags out and it's cooldown resets. That's really strong. Um, so let's look at her ultimate energy field. She's just a support character for the most part. 540% uh, of the user's max HP is the damage. Deals water element damage. When the last attack it hits, it does airborne. The entire team's core gauge jumps to 100% charged. That is super strong. I like it. Super strong. So they just automatically get to use their core attacks. It's not like the most broken thing, but it's a fun support skill. Next up, her QTE is just water damage. There's nothing happening here. This makes her kind of a crappy character to use in like a water team because she just does that. And the range on that is terrible. Apparently it pushes back. I have never noticed it push back ever. I've never noticed it. Probably because you miss it half the time. If you're not right, okay, auto misses it half the time. If you're not right up on them, this attack is doing nothing. So apparently it pushes back. Uh, it says by pushing forward. Circle and attacks by pushing the enemies forward. That, that's backward. I guess it's forward. I guess it is forward. It, it's one of those like semantic things. Okay, it is forward, I guess, technically. Anyway, moving on. If that's forward, forward would be whatever direction she's facing. Okay, moving on. All right. So this skill, uh, this is her little healing wave thing, her support skill. I do like this one. This is what she triggers if she's supporting Janu. So <clears throat> Juhi uses the power of healing to recover allies HP and mana, and she attacks as well. So water element damage, the user instantly recovers 5% of Lee Juhi's max HP. So if you got her at the high HP threshold, then she's really good. She's like the quintessential character to put on that, I mentioned it earlier. She's a quintessential character to put on that four piece set that increases her max HP, but reduces her attack and then increases allies attack. Cause she's not doing any damage anyway. You might as well. And then her stats, her stuff doesn't scale off of her attack anyway. She is the quintessential character to do that. So you put that on her, the four piece. The user instantly recovers 200 MP. Team members in this circle recover HP equal to 1% of Juhi's max HP. So just, yeah, you put, you put that set on her and max out her HP. So here's her basic skill too. Releases the power of healing to recover her allies HP and simultaneously attack. So it's the same skill basically, but it's a little bit different. So um, water element damage, the entire team instantly recovers 5% of her max HP. Team members in the circle instantly recover 1% of her max HP. Uh, this skill here, great heal. So I like this one here. Recovers team members HP equal to 1.5% of her HP and then applies an attack increase to team members for a certain period of time. I like the attack increase. It's only for it's only by 3% and for 15 seconds, but that could help very, very well on an offensive character that scales off of their attack step. Very nice. 
so the the basic is just as the word says basic she's not she's not doing anything i i she's certainly better than kang and then the the, the light guy whatever his name is she's certainly better than them i think for sure i think for sure she's better than them i just don't love her i don't love her play style i hate her basic attack all of it i just don't like it um so i'm and, and i feel like i could be hating like <laughs> I feel, no, no, no. I'm not hating. I feel like I sound like a hater. <laughs> That's what I'll say. I, I just don't love it. But I do acknowledge she does have some few a few good things in her kit that are useful if you were to put her on your team, particularly as a support. So Jin Ho, I think, is not great, but he has a use. His primary use is to be... <laughs> look, I love this. Is to be a breaker support character for Jinu. Uh, like I was, Jinu, it's me. Uh, and then also the users, uh, the little potion thing. 5% of the user's HP is recovered upon obtaining a potion. I just, I think that's so funny. I'm pretty sure they show up on the board, right? He just drops the potions out there. I've seen him before. Show me the, but yeah, they just. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So that's his best skill to me uh, as being a support, which is, that, that, that ties into the series, right? So anyway, when my turn, trust me or I'll protect you hits uh they create potions near the user upon obtaining a potion recovers hp equal to eight percent of his max hp so that's better for him himself to get it uh as you get dupes in him when he uses trust me creates an aura that deals damage equal to 70 percent of his defense every second during the duration of trust me that's very strong creating an aura uh also increases the hp <laughs> he gets a shield in here Applies all effects below when obtaining a potion. When he obtains a potion, he recovers HP equal to 12% of the max, increases his attack, and gets a shield. Like, he's, he's a funny character. He's really a funny character. I think his best skill, like I said, is his support skill. But if you're using him as a standalone, he's not bad either. Specifically because he could be useful for you in some of the bosses that just are, are weak to light, right? So here we go. That can apply to every character, obviously. But yeah. Increases the user's defense by 40% for 15 seconds. His skills uh, scale off of defense, as you see. And then when it hits, it does an airborne. So 40% for 15 seconds is strong. But, but, but that's like it. This is the QTE. Light damage, break. And then when it hits, inflicts airborns and recovers his uh, HP, 5% of his HP. That one's for him. But when he's doing the Janu thing, he does that. But it's just, you know, it's just going to be for Janu because he leaves the potion out there. Trust me, uh, takes a stance and prepares for battle, 930% of the user's defense, and then also applies the defense increase effect while doing breaks. So he picks up defense kind of everywhere and does breaks pretty much everywhere as well. So this one does an airborne effect with break and light damage, and then also stuns. So he has a stun in there as well. So also break here on the regular attack too. When the skill hits and inflicts airborne as well. So I like him a lot. So my turn, when my turn, trust me or I'll protect you, hits they create a potion near the user so that's going to be one of these my turn and trust me so when these hit these generate potions from his passive so that just means more passives more uh, potions for him i actually kind of like him more than i thought i would i think on paper he is actually kind of good i think he's actually kind of good i think he goes right there i like him a lot i like him a lot uh so next we're going to cover song next so song is an interesting one uh his play style is kind of interesting be, being that he's obviously a mage but then he also sword a little bit so he's kind of a fun character uh he's an offensive character his stuff does scale off of his attack so let's see the passive first and foremost when iado type 4 uh red lotus flower hits increases the damage of incinerate by 20 percent for 10 seconds stacking up to three times and charges his core gauge by 100 percent so iado type 4 is going to be one of these here it is red lotus flower when this hits increases the damage of incinerate and charges his core gauge so let's see what happens here recalling his time as a swordsman he imbues his sword with the power of flame so stage one okay so he hits multiple times stage one stage two stage three to do more damage mp consumption also goes up oh god dang it the notifications back 80 percent each time it deals fire element damage when the last attack hits it does an airborne and then does burn Burn is equal to 50% of attack every three seconds, okay? Hellfire kind of doesn't really do anything. It's just a nice big fire blast attack. That's good. Incinerate. This is the core attack. He's going to charge the core gauge as well. And then he also increases the damage of incinerate by 20% here. So again, another big range attack. 
Eat this. Not not really, but area of effect is kind of wide, so he'll hit the. It's it's a good state. It's a good one for like stages with a bunch of monsters. Uh, 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 so there's that, and then the basic is using the sword, right? No, it's the fire blast. Okay, fire blast and sword. My bad. So he's just he's not really doing much. He's not really doing much. Damage increases on burning targets. Not really doing much. Um, another character that synergizes with burns. Not really doing a ton. Uh, I'm just going to put him in C for now. Actually, I think he's probably a B character. But I'm going to put him in C for now. You guys don't see that, but I'm putting him in C. I think he might be a B character. All right, let's cover Park. And then we'll cover my main guy, Iron. All right. So Park is strong. I like her as a mage. I like her movement. I like everything. In fact, there's been a few mages, but I think she's my favorite one on the list. Uh, and I don't mean to sound like, you know, like, uh, what's it called? You know, like I have favorites because, I mean, I do. I play the game, but I really, really like her play style, uh, her movement, all of that. I love this huge tornado, all of it. So here's the passive. When the user uses air ball, wind shear, air cutter, or wind vortex, reco recovers power gear. So basically when she uses anything. Wind Blade, okay, the QTE, so it doesn't trigger on this, but that doesn't matter. Wind Vortex, Air Cutter, Wind Shear, or, or Air Ball, okay. So basically every damn thing, she recovers Power Gate, that's very strong. Decreases the cooldown of Windstorm by 30%. That's this one, so using her other skills makes her ultimate pop faster. That's really strong. She's got almost 3,000% on the damage modifier for this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a humongous typhoon, so obviously the area of effect on this is very strong. Uh, all right. Windblader support skill. So, wind damage recovers team members' power gauge. Very strong, increasing the power gauge by 15%. And then also applies the breeze effect. And when it hits, removes debuffs on all team members. A cleanse on your team. Wow, I didn't even know she did that. So, breeze increases ultimate damage. This is actually really strong. This is actually really strong. Why? Because it's so easy for her to spam her ultimate because all the cooldown stuff. So she, in my opinion, I think you still want to put that set on her to reduce her cooldown. Uh, like I think there's, a, what is it, ultimate damage up for the two piece and then the four piece is cooldown and ultimate damage, something like that. I think you put that on her and just spam her ultimate like crazy. I think it's amazing if I'm remembering the right skill set. But yeah, using her skills makes it easier and then Breeze makes her do more damage. The rest of this isn't doing anything, but I really like this. Uh, I'm putting her in A, easy, easy A in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to put her right there right there i really like her play style i think that that that's such a short and sweet kit it's like a perfect loop um when she uses the and also the cleanse right when using the air cutter removes debuffs from her and her party so on more skills when she gets one dupe she now cleanses on multiple skills now that's really strong okay now this one here uh by the way so the way that she's playing she doesn't do the the cleanse thing when she's not being used by Janu, right yeah so she asks it's only for when she's with Janu. so that first dupe is really strong because it makes her cleanse on her other skill as a standalone character not a support character so that that first dupe makes a huge difference in her all right so last but not least kim chul i just gotta say this guy's awesome i just he's i'm just gonna tell you right now uh he's he's going he is at least going here. He probably goes here. I think, which means I don't really need this. I just, there doesn't, there doesn't need to be this row. I, I like this a lot, by the way. I don't think I'm going to move this around. Most of the time, my tier lists aren't left to right centric. They don't really matter, but you can do that if you want. Um, I think he's awesome. I actually, I actually think he's the best SR in the game. I'm not even going to lie to you. I think he's the best SR in the game. Passive. When shield, jump, or fierce roar are used, applies impenetrable. So it creates a shield equal to 2.5% of the user's defense uh, when he uses the shield jump or fierce roar. It's going to be this one. So shield jump and fierce roar is the other skill. I uh, No, that's the ultimate, right? No, no, it's just... Okay. So it's just either of these. It typically is this. I don't know why I keep getting confused by this. So either of his two skills, he gets that extra impenetrable shield. So next up, we're going to take a look at the core attack. So he does break damage here. Nothing special. We take a look here, and they, this stuff scales off of his defense. So we look here, nothing special, just like damage. But again, we go back to the passive. When he uses those, he also gets a shield. So right here, Chul gathers energy into the shield. After pulling in the surrounding enemies, he slams the ground, uh, gathered energy into the ground. So right here, heavy break, does a stun, and increases his defense. Again, all of his stuff scales off the defense. The support skill, this is when he's used with Janu. He does the same attack. 
except uh, with this one, he does a medium break, light damage, and then also applies impenetrable. Shield equal to 40% of the user's defense. He applies that to, to Janu. So that's really strong. Uh, and then the QTE, this is when he is a standalone character, but he's switching in. He does the break and stuns the opponent. So a stun right there, impenetrable here. He gets impenetrables on these, to, despite them not saying it. It's basically a wasted passive. It's similar to, to Kang's, ultimately. Like, it's, it's, it's basically worthless. Uh, anyway, he gets the stun here, and then the defense increases on these skills alongside the break. And then the ultimate, 1833 of the user's defense. Creates a shield zone around the user. When in the zone, damage taken is decreased by 30% and applies a shield equal to 25%, typo there, of defense for allies within the zone. So this guy, to recap, he is the character that, look at this, look at the range on this zone, by the way, it's massive. He is the character you put on your team to have a defensive backbone. He is a one-man wrecking army when it comes to defense. We've seen other defense characters on here, like Jinho we just looked at, who's a good... Who's, he's a little bit of a support character because of the potions and stuff. Uh, you know, but this guy is the best straightforward defensive character on the team. The ultimate here is really strong creating that shield zone where you take less damage and you also generate shields to everybody within the zone. This is obviously going to be amazing on your three-man teams when you're taking on those dark bosses that are weak to light. That's how that works. I feel like I'm second guessing myself. He does, again, shields on basically everything because of the passive. And he's got the stuns in here as well. So just a lot of utility. A lot of utility. Stuns on multiple skills. A lot of utility. So I think that if you have a damage dealer on your team, he is one of the best characters you can put alongside that damage dealer to not have to worry about defense. And I really, really like the three man team of him, Baek Yunho, and uh, Byungu. For the support, the healing, all that stuff. I really like that trio. I've used them a ton and they've got me through a lot of content. Now I wouldn't, I wouldn't, again, I think he's top two in the game. I wouldn't be surprised if you say he's the best. I wouldn't be surprised if you thought he was A tier and then she's standalone by herself up there. Maybe you think some of these other characters are better than than Kim. I don't really agree with that. But uh Iron is Iron's my guy. He's I think he's amazing. So that is how things are shaking out for me in today's video uh if you enjoyed it be sure to subscribe hit the thumbs up all that fun stuff and i will see you all in the next one take it easy i was gonna say take care take it easy guys